Hello friends, how are you all? Let us continue international economic policy and this is the 12th video of this particular lesson and in this video we are going to study about the foreign trade policy. Okay, we all know what is the meaning of foreign trade, right? Foreign trade simply means exports and imports. Okay, exports and imports is foreign trade like whatever India is selling to other countries and whatever India is buying from other countries that is known as foreign trade. And every country has a policy to regulate, to control his exports and, uh, exports and imports and that is known as foreign trade policy. So foreign trade policies are regularly updated. For example, uh, you know, foreign trade policies are updated maybe every five years, every two years. In some countries, it is updated every year also, depending on the changing scenario of the world and, you know, uh, changing regulations and, uh, you know, international uh, scenario. So depending on the country changes its foreign trade policy, mostly foreign trade policy also supports investments in a country because, uh, you know, uh, in order to be a part of the value chain, right, in order to be part of the global value chain, value chain meaning basically it is the uh, manufacturing process, uh, okay, through which value is added in every step, for example, manufacture of automobile. So maybe, uh, you know, some components are manufactured in USA, then it is, uh, you know, imported to China, then some value addition is done here, then China will send it to India and finally assembly is done in India. So this is a value chain. So in order to, uh, you know, be part of this value chain, we need to have a good foreign trade policy because a lot of in inputs and a lot of components which are used in manufacturing process are uh, imported, right? And then we also sell these goods to the other countries. So that is our exports. So basically, uh, importance of foreign trade policy uh, is very much for a country in order to promote its foreign trade, to promote its global competitiveness, to improve its, uh, you know, manufacturing industry. Okay, so let us uh, understand what is exactly the foreign trade policy and uh, currently which foreign trade policy is working in India and, you know, what is to be expected in the future. So basically foreign trade policy is a set of guidelines, okay, it is a guideline uh, to facilitate trade by reducing transaction and transit cost and time, okay. So every country tries to reduce its, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, hurdles to trade, basically transaction costs, okay, transit cost and time, basically how, uh, you know, uh, the, whenever, you know, anything is imported or exported, there are custom clearances, so how we can reduce that time. You know, there are a lot of bureaucratic procedure also, a lot of applications and different approvals that are required. How all those things can be reduced? Okay, so it is a set of guidelines which guides the, you know, uh, traders, uh, foreign traders. Foreign trade policy is developed by Directorate General of Foreign Trade. Okay, DGFT. So this is a body in the Ministry of Commerce and Industry in India. Okay, Government of India. So they develop the foreign trade policy of India. They basically they do research and then based on that they make the foreign trade policy. Currently, as of today, uh, foreign trade policy of 2015-20. Okay, so uh, after the uh, you know uh, Modi government came first time in 2014, they issued a new foreign trade policy in 2015, and that foreign trade policy uh, was supposed to be applicable from 2015 to 2020. Okay, for five to six years. Uh, and it is still in force uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic, we could not bring a new foreign trade policy and it was extended till 31st March 2022 and further extended till 31st March 2023. So uh, up till 31st March as on today, uh, up to 31st March 2023, which is just next month, uh, this foreign trade policy is going to be in force. Basically, we are going to follow whatever is written in this policy. Maybe after this, a new policy will come and, uh, you know, some changes will be there. Government can extend, uh, you know, this policy further also. We never know. Let us wait for the news. You all are reading current affairs and news. So you will get to know whether government has extended this foreign trade policy for another six months uh, or, you know, it is bringing a new policy. Now, what are the main objectives of a foreign trade policy? Okay, first of all, to increase exports, basically, we want to sell more of our products outside. Because as you know, exports is a part of our GDP. So if exports increases, our GDP will also increase our economic growth will happen, right? Our income will increase, it is to promote make in India, basically, as I've already told you, in order to be part of the global value chains, 
okay uh, we have to uh, you know have a good foreign trade policy because a lot of inputs and components in the manufacturing process in the value addition process they are imported so in order to promote make in india we need to have a good foreign trade policy obviously to create jobs if there will be more manufacturing if there will be more industry right more exports and imports business more jobs will be created and make india better respond to global problems related to trade okay so there are a lot of issues global problem related to trade we need to have a policy we need to have guidelines which will guide our country whenever such problems are occurring for example recently the russia ukraine war uh, was happening right and then so many different things uh, you know maybe in the near past only uh, you know us china trade war and this kind of things were also happening so how do we deal with such kind of situations so our foreign trade policy should have such guidelines as to whenever you know there are any global problems related to trade we should be able to respond to them in a very good manner now let us study about our foreign trade policy of 2015 20 so very briefly i am going to explain to you what was there in the ftp 2015 20 which is still in force okay in a very crisp and very short we are not going to go in much detail because it is not very much relevant for our exam as of now but just to have a background see whenever a new foreign trade policy will come our new foreign trade policy will soon come maybe you know in march this year next month or another 6 months it will definitely come so in order to understand this new foreign trade policy we need to know the background so this background is there in the ftp 2015 20 that's why i'm explaining to it to you in a very short manner okay so in the ftp 2015 basically the main point was that there were two schemes that the government had launched and one was meis and second was scis okay now what is meis and scis meis is merchandise exports from india scheme okay merchandise exports from india scheme okay merchandise exports means goods exports basically okay goods exports physical goods and scis was service exports from india scheme okay this was service exports from india scheme so these two schemes were launched now what was there in these two schemes we are going to see in meis in the merchandise export from india scheme it consolidated previous five schemes into one okay so there were uh, five schemes in order to uh, you know encourage exporters okay these schemes we are not going to go in detail but these were the schemes to encourage exporters okay to give them some trade benefit some tax benefits some duty benefits okay there were five different kind of schemes they combined them they consolidated them into just one scheme okay so that there is no confusion see whenever there is an exporter uh, if there is just one scheme there is one consolidated scheme one consolidated guideline then it is easy for them to you know uh, to know what to expect from the government if there are five or 10 schemes it is very confusing whether i will fit into this scheme or that scheme or what benefit will i get so it is always better to consolidate schemes so that was done and conditions attached to duty free scribes were removed now what is this duty free scribes i will tell you see this word is pronounced as scribes okay scribes not scripts so now what is duty free scribes i'll explain to you see for example there is an exporter in india so this exporter is selling some final goods in another country this is india and say this is usa okay so he is selling some goods in uh, usa say this goods is uh, you can say uh, you know t-shirts so if he is selling t-shirts in usa this is a final good now this is a export right this is an export because he is selling uh, india's product into foreign country there is a buyer in foreign country he is buying this now but in order to manufacture this t-shirt he is buying some you know imported raw material for example he is buying cotton he is buying cotton from giza okay giza cotton is very famous then he is buying the dye okay the dye which is used in manufacturing of textiles for example he is buying it from say south africa okay so he is buying some raw materials from outside he is importing these raw materials so he is importing the raw materials from foreign countries okay now in order whenever he is importing some raw material these inputs okay these are known as inputs he will have to pay some import duty right some custom duty import duty now these import duties are exempted on these okay because he is exporting the final good and this exemption of, of import duty are known as duty free scribes authorization for these are called duty free scribes the, he gets this duty free scribes because he is selling the final goods uh in the foreign countries exporting them and based on these exports he is getting the duty free scribes and using this duty free scribes he can claim for this 
exemption from import duty okay so this is the benefit that is given now let us come to uh, you know the next scheme that is SEIS service export from India scheme now basically uh, it may previously you know in the previous uh, foreign trade policy uh, service sector or service exports were, did not have the benefit of duty credit scripts okay duty free scripts but in uh, SEIS basically it extended the duty free scripts duty credit scripts to service sector also okay and eligible service categories only not all the services but some eligible services we don't need to go into detail but eligible service categories they granted were granted benefit of duty credit scripts which can be used for payments of basic custom duty okay so this was basically the SEIS scheme then another important point in the foreign trade policy of 2015-20 was about the special economic zones. Okay, special economic zones meaning these are the geographic area, these are the designated area in a country, in a state, in a city. Okay, where, where you know there are a lot of benefits to uh, you know the people who are actually manufacturing there or who are actually providing ser from service from there. They are given some tax benefits, they are given, they are given uh, you know maybe subsidized electricity, subsidized land etc. So special economic zones under MEIS and SEIS given more incentives. So okay, so they are given incentives because they are exporting things. So in special economic zones, uh, liberal laws like taxation, duties, licensings and permits, okay, these were applicable. What were the incentives given? Duty free imported inputs, 100% income tax exemption on export income for 5 years. Then exemption from minimum alternate tax. Okay, uh, we have already seen this MAT. What is the meaning of this? So the companies which were set up in uh, SEZ, they were given the minimum alternate tax exemption. That is, they did not have to pay the minimum alternate tax. But what? Uh, okay, uh, because see, minimum alternate tax was there because uh, you know a lot of corporate they do they do some accounting, uh, you know, manipulations in order to uh, you know avoid paying taxes. Therefore, government has a facility of uh, minimum alternate tax. You can see this. Uh, in the lesson where we have discussed about the tax right then zero rated GST okay single window clearances single window clearances meaning they have to just apply in one place for all the different approvals from different government departments and it will be done at one place at state and central level then 100% FDI allowed in almost all sectors except for few exemptions we all we also know what are these exemptions then profits earned can be freely repatriated okay if there is a foreign company which is being set up they can freely repatriate repatriate meaning send back their profits to their mother countries and offering land office spaces etc so these are the different benefits that are given there are about 265 special economic zones in india operational okay see there are 265 but 64 percent see almost one third almost one third of the special economic zones are only in five states and these are the five developed states Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Karnataka, Andhra and Maharashtra okay so you can see there is a lot of uh, you know inequality regional inequality when it comes to you know this this kind of economic activity so two out of 265 econo special economic zones 64 percent meaning almost one third of these are present in only five states so uh, basically uh, these are just some of the data and this is some some of the background that you need to know about the FTP 2015-20. We'll continue about it in the next video. Thank you.